doop 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 doopity doop doop la dee dee da doop da doop huh there's a tower here since when was there a tower here the hill giant stopped in his tracks and squinted up at the huge tower sitting in the middle of the clearing had to be 200 feet tall, and every so often a big puff of terrible-looking black smoke belched out of a seemingly infinite number of chimneys up at the top. He frowned. If there had been a tower there before, he would have noticed it. Then again, he might have noticed it already and forgotten about it. Sometimes he forgot things that weren't important. He looked up at the tower again. Towers seemed kind of important, didn't they? You wouldn't build something so tall unless you had a good reason. You'd get really tired just picking up all the metal and everything. So there was probably something really good in the tower. You just had to get in there and get it. The hill giant crossed the large clearing cautiously, as if he was worried that the tower was going to disappear if he startled it. But the tower didn't disappear. It just stood there, all tall and smoky and important, like it owned the place. At the bottom of the tower, there was a door. This door was only really big enough for a small person, not a hill giant. At least, not a hill giant who wasn't willing to crawl through a small person door. But if a tower was worth putting a door in it, it was probably worth going inside. So this giant decided he was willing to crawl through a door made for a small person, if that was what it took. He grabbed the knob of the little door, and it was a big round knob right in the middle of the door, which seemed strange. He gave the strange doorknob a little tug, but it didn't move. He frowned harder and glared at the doorknob. No little person doorknob was going to stop a great big giant from opening any door he wanted, that was for certain. He pulled harder. Neither the door nor the knob moved. He grabbed the strange handle with his other hand. He pulled pretty hard with both, but it seemed to be stuck fast. And this was vexing indeed. He was very big! And this door was very small. This door had no right stopping him from opening it if he was willing to pull very hard. The hill giant gritted his teeth, put one foot on the wall of the tower, and pulled as hard as he could with both hands, letting out a massive yell as he did. The metal groaned and strained, and then a the strange, wheel-like doorknob broke free and the hill giant fell over backwards, landing with a resounding thump, door wheel still in his hand. He squinted at the wheel for a moment, trying to remember why he'd wanted it. He was unsure of the reason, but it was probably something important. Oh well, he'd remember eventually. In the meantime, the hill giant stood himself up, dusted off, and walked back into the forest, door wheel in hand. Doop doop doop, doop a dee doop doop, la dee da la dee da doop. This is pot against the machine. Pot against the machine. Uh, welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only Pathfinder actual play that has resistance 10 to every element. The entire periodic table, everything from Strunk and White, and the Honda crossover SUV. I'm your host, and here's everybody. Yeah, but are you immune to my cool skateboarding sweatshirt from the early 2000s <laughs> that says element? Oh, man. You forgot that one. I forgot one. That's my one It's weakness. got a tree on it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Previously on the program, what happened? Um, Asher was awakened by a knock on the door from Dolga Fredert, who let him know that uh, some gremlins, not gremlins, gerblins, gerblins were attacking a, a winery a few miles down the road. And um, she asked if he could help out since, you know, Torch can't solve their own problems and they had heard the heroes were in town. Uh, Asher, of course, agreed to do this when... Um, out to find his companions, though of course Kira was left to have some quality time with her family, and um, 
They all gathered up on the black hill where their moth was hanging out with Brixby all, all night. Convinced the magical psychic moth <laughs> to uh, fly them a couple miles down the road rather than walking. Um, they flew over to the Knock on Wood Vineyard uh, and found the two brothers who run the place, Roland and Tannic, uh, who were more than happy to direct our heroes down to the basement where goblins had apparently tunneled their way in. Our heroes went down and found the goblins. They were weird because they didn't have eyes and they resisted pretty much every damage and all elements and stuff and they had freaky witch powers. Uh, turns out that they were demons. But the party managed to kill several of them, drop one in a hole, and just kind of beat on it for a while. But <laughs> two of them escaped down the tunnel. And that's where we are now, with our heroes in the basement. No demons in sight, so everything's probably fine, right? Alwyn, have you seen Asher? Yes, he was chasing one of these little monsters. It ran into some kind of cave over there. I came back to make sure you were okay. I think he's still keeping an eye on it to see if it comes back out. Uh, let's go back him up. Get on the disc. I insist. Alan <laughs> crawls onto the disc in, uh, as has already been established, the Titanic position. <laughs> it's the only it's way the it only works. Way lets other people <laughs> ride. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the magic. Do you understand? That? Well, you probably do understand the magic, but just don't think about it. Let's go. Well... I've been staring at this hole for quite some time. Either it doesn't lean very far down and they're simply waiting a few feet down in the dirt, or it leads farther down somewhere, perhaps, to a whole nest of these swathed demons. Are we confident that they won't return simply because we fought them in battle and didn't simply run away screaming like Roland and Tannic did? Do we know how many there even are? We saw the two escape, but... That's not that many. Is it really that big of an issue? Do you have the ability to cover this up magically or otherwise? I don't. Nor I. None of my spells can do anything like that. Yeah. Well, normally I would say, uh, you know, not my extra plane of monkeys, not my winery circus, but, you know, I've been talking to a moth lately. And, uh, made me want to be a better rat man. I, I think we should go after them. Sorry, Asher, I cut you off. What were you saying? No, I... No apologies necessary for self-improvement. However, all I was going to say was... I attempted to ascertain from out here whether there was some weakness structurally to the tunnel to see if we couldn't perhaps collapse it, but I wasn't able to get anywhere concrete with my knowledge engineering. Though, come to think of it, concrete could really solve this problem. Wow, Jeff, it's like you play the 20 int character. Let's I take a look. That mixer. That's a 15 off the die <laughs> for a 32. Is there any way that we can give Jeff's wonderful idea wings? <laughs> well, if you had some um, concrete, that would certainly help um, I think the problem that you have here is that this is basically just an earthen tunnel and um, you could throw dirt in it, um, but there's no saying somebody can't just dig through the dirt again. To does it right look back. like they broke the floor when they came in or does it look like it was kind of already crumbled and that's why they were able to dig up through? It was definitely. Like, do we think they could break through stone if we were able to seal it up again? No, it was definitely in rough shape before. So if you were able okay. to seal it with stone, then it would yeah. probably. Because I was gonna say it'd be kind of useless if it looked like they just blew right through even the stone. There'd be no point in even repairing it in that point. Halloween, the sack. Yes. Do you wanna, you know, just pitch a fur ball? Yeah, sure. That's a uh, that's a D one hundred, right? <laughs> It is indeed. <laughs> and he'll say, oh, of course. And uh, he will take his brown bag of tricks and he will grab one of the little furry uh, balls that I imagine look like the things from the Critters movie and just uh, throw that 
at the hole, and it is a 71, which I do not have that page or our loot sheet up, so I don't know what that turns into. That's a boar. You just threw a oh, boar perfect. down the hole. Yeah, they dig for truffles and stuff. That's a good animal to toss in a hole. Hey, boar! I know this might be a bit of a bore of a task, but we need to figure out if the creatures that bored this hole are still on the other side of the hole. Bore. Yes. See if there's any boring company down there, Elon. This poor bore. It's only going to exist for a minute and you're associating it. Elon with Tusk. The- <laughs> 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 Brought it home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Zach. Yeah. yeah, it has very long curly tusks, so we named it Elong Tusk. It's n- no relation to any real person. Uh, but yeah, I think he will uh, order it to, he'll say, uh, Hello, Mr. Pig. Can you run down that tunnel and see if there's any kind of creatures still in it? And I guess it's up to Sam how... It does that because it does listen to me, but it also has animal intelligence. So I'm not sure how it, well it can follow an order like that. <laughs> I'm looking up handle animal tricks <laughs> um, in Pathfinder. Yeah, I know there is like a trick like a, that you can do, like seek or hunt or something like that. Is a... um, See, there's a fetch. There's a flea. There's a guide. It could guide you. Um, it can. Yeah, but we don't seek. want to go in the hole with it. <laughs> yeah, I think seek would be it. No, it would be seek. And that's the command he would give it is to seek and maybe like we show it the uh, blood of the ones that we've already hurt or something. It's a pig, they got a good sense of smell. And so for the next 10 minutes or however long. Is it 10 minutes or 5 minutes? Um. I think 10 minutes. Now I want... Gore's Asher. Whoa. I want an official Disney-sponsored robot vacuum <laughs> shaped like a warthog <laughs> called a Pumba Roomba. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Just had to share that with the class. <laughs> that would be the worst shape for trying to get into corners. But all the grubs cleaning. would be out of your house. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, it... The whole thing that's on the floor would be just like a kind of distorted boar head, so it would be like it's sniffing, and then it would just have a little vestigial body kind of up in the air. I don't know why we're doing this podcast, and we have ideas like this. <laughs> Speaking of which, ten minutes? Halloween, that's more than enough to go down the tunnel and then drive a multi-million dollar company into the ground. Boy, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Elon Tusk heads down the tunnel, sniffing and sniffing and sniffing away, and disappears into the darkness. And I don't know that it really knows to come back once it finds anything. Um, so, like, you, you, your dark vision extends 60 feet. Um, you yeah. see it disappear into the darkness 60 feet away under the ground keeps on going yeah because i don't it's not like it's a uh, familiar or anything i don't have any sort of connection to this animal <laughs> we just told it to look for these things that it smells and that's We're what it's just gonna do and we have no idea what it's at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i keep buying more boars and they go in the demon hole it sounds like you're just feeding the demons boar <laughs> do we hear anything like the sudden sound of a boar screaming is it boar no more yeah do we boar hear yeah. boinking <laughs> as the demon lights it on fire i think you just um heard it snuffling along for a while and then eventually it's far enough away that you can't even really hear that maybe if you get a good perception check you might hear something different eventually amazing perception here that is a six on the die for a four seven on the die for a 13 eight on the die for a 23 so i think alwyn and asher are pretty sure the boar has ceased to be probably got unsummoned well maybe brixby's little rat ears um can hear the sound the distant sound of like hooves scrabbling on wood maybe it it sounds like they it, it maybe hit wood, uh, something beyond the natural tunnel. Regardless, I... No, no, go ahead, please. 
was going to say, does it connect to another building, maybe? Uh, unfortunately, it's your ball and not mine, but you can't really communicate with it either. So, uh, from what I, I mean, my, my main mission was not to feed the demons. It was to see if there was any immediate traps. It seems that it's made at a decent distance. I, uh, um, well, I say we follow. Sam, you had mentioned in your description as we approached that there was a barn a couple hundred feet away. Does this feel like it's the direction of the barn? It does feel approximately Skyrim. barn direction. Because we could just <laughs> pop outside and head over to the barn real quick and not run through a tunnel and see. Hey, is there a Another opening in the earth, and now demons and a oh, dead boar. The board. old boar at the front door. T- trick. Gambit. Tactic. Yes. He's come <laughs> up through the floor. He's a trap boar. <laughs> oh, man. We need to use this bag of tricks more often. I don't think the rest of you are taking the safety of my pig into the consideration you should be. Well, I wanted to live, but... I would, it would be faster for us, or at least one of us, to run up and check the barn instead no, no, of crawling no, slowly no. through a tunnel. Sorry. Gives the... Yeah. I missed you. We do that. <laughs> All right. Um, so Star wipe. You go up in the barn. upstairs um, to Tannic and Roland's house, and they're, um, you know, hanging out. And they're like, oh, um, did you, did you take care of it? Merlo, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a, a wine joke for you, but don't worry. We're still just checking into it. We're, um. Yes, we're solving you on the case. <laughs> By that, I mean, we've killed a couple of them. A few more got away through a tunnel and were wanting to check out your barn in case... They've exited on the other side and to your other building. Uh, uh, okay, well, help yourselves. Good luck. Oh, uh, thanks again. And Asher makes a mental note to send a copy of Basic Creatures of Galarian to these brothers so that they can identify <laughs> what a goblin is, because these are not those. Yeah. But he How doesn't do it judgmentally. He thinks it like an opportunity to educate them. All right, well dragging you all over um, as you go the 200 feet or so around the property to another chunk of the map here where the barn is and this barn is in bad shape a big chunk of it has kind of fallen off the side here like there's a big barn door in front of you that's closed but um, the, much like the house that you can just walk right in the side of the building you don't actually need to bother with doors do we do we hear anything? We go through the door. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Not maybe we just go through the door, right? <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> they had set trip wires and stuff in the actual wine wine cellar, so Asher would caution against just heedlessly running right. through. I'm gonna roll a perception do for my boy. That is a twelve off the die for a twenty seven. 28 if it's a high tech or mechanical ruse. Um, you do not see any high tech or mechanical traps on the barn door adjacent to the <laughs> giant hole in the barn. <laughs> we should see if it's we locked, should, they, really feel this out. No, see, they expect us to come through. Sam, the hole. I mean, That's like pitchforks trapped. on the ground that come up and hit us in the nose in a comical and slapstick sort of way. <laughs> yeah, the Sideshow Bob <laughs> Classic does not appear to be present at this time. Just the second you think you see a four-armed creature lurking on the other side of the door, but then <laughs> no, it's a pile of hay. It's just a shadow. Brixby falls to his knees. Yeah, we really gotta start greening it in. Hey! <laughs> that's, that's my contribution. I said that with an A. Um... <laughs> Congratulations. 
Um, I don't see anything. Uh, and also, they would have to have extensively trapped this area, given that there's multiple points of ingress. Um, shall we head in? <laughs> and the door is locked. Mm. <laughs> Asher yeah. draws a revolver in his left hand and now has two revolvers, one in each hand, both of which are fully loaded. Using my pearl. I don't know why you would. Don't cast that before the swine. <laughs> uh, so, the barn itself is dilapidated. Um, there is an empty water trough over to your right as you walk in, and then there are, it looks like old horse paddocks, all of which are empty. Um, and then there's, you know, some hay and more holes in the building. Directly up ahead, the uh, boar that Alwyn summoned is sort of sitting down below a raised hayloft that's about 10 feet off the ground. And up in that hayloft, you do see those two demons, along with a um, human-appearing woman. Just pop her up on the screen. Now, this woman is dressed in finery. Um, she sort of looks approximately noble um, in bearing and stature, and she stands rather imperiously upon a semi-collapsed hayloft, and she says, Aha! You all have walked into my trap. Oh, you got us. Uh, the old swathe demons in a Wine cellar tunneling into a barn. Hope I don't send in a magical boar trap. If I had a gold piece for every time that happened. I'd only have two gold pieces, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. <laughs> and who might you be? You will consider yourselves defeated by none other than Diara Belgroom, agent of the Technic League. You, of course, have a chance to surrender now. Throw down your weapons and your spell-casting implements, and you will be treated carefully. Or with care, or, you know, treated. You won't be harmed, is, is the thing. But, um... I don't have a sense and motive on the part where she said she works for the Technic League. <laughs> I just wish uh, our enemies could see the roll 20 distance measuring that happens at any point. I know it's not really a <laughs> physical or visceral thing to experience, but the intention that's there. When yeah, you I just feel like they can walk see up to it. a character and you just see a bunch of different colored arrows pointing towards that. Yeah. <laughs> just slowly stretching and retreating. That is a dirty 20 on that sense motive for uh, whether she's telling the truth about being a Technic League agent just hanging out in a barn loft and torch. <laughs> um, she might be stretching the truth a little bit there. I think he'll say, you don't seem much like the other Technic League agents we've met. Yeah, that's a lofty story. How dare you question me? You have one more chance. Throw down your weapons. Or I will make short work of all of you. Where's your sword? He's already rather short, so it won't take you much time. However, I'm the tallest here. And I'd say, why don't you come down and we have this conversation like civilized adults. Oral diplomacy. Why not? <laughs> Ooh, hot seven off the dice. Uh, it does come up to a 23, though. I'm afraid I will not be coming down, for you see, I have the high ground. That that means I win. That I saw that once in a movie. How high is this ground, by the way, <laughs> Sam? Just it's, asking for a th Pythagoras. <laughs> it's uh, about ten feet up um, above. Like you can see the boar standing at the sort of below where the hayloft is, and the sort of back ten feet or back fifteen feet of the barn um it's above this you know totally unattainable for anybody no matter how mad their ups may be i think 
if none of you are going to throw down your weapons and, and give up, she's she's going to begin casting a spell. Oh, it's initiative time. Uh, if you'd like to roll for initiative, I mean, you could just let her cast whatever she's casting. I mean, there's some spell crafts and some other things I'd like to do, but first I have to throw this digital dice onto a 14 for a 22. She's probably just casting Owl's Wisdom or something. Uh, Brixby, 22. Helen got a 17 on the die for a 23. Everybody's going to be fast, aren't they? I mean, the 14 I rolled on the dice is higher than the last several rolls I've made combined. So that's optimistic. A 19 total. 19 total. Well, that's pretty good. And uh, first thing up is one of these little demon friends. It's going to hold its turn, so Alowin's up. Uh, okay, Alowin is going to uh, stride forward a bit to the... So she would be in that square. She would be in, like, this square here, if you can see my thing. Yeah. Um, so he would have to be about there in order for this to work because she's 10 feet up. Uh, so he is going to stride forward about 25 feet, most of his movement. Uh, and he is going to look at her trying to cast a spell. And he is going to cast a spell at her. She needs to make me a uh, will save. Alright. She totally has a will save. Is this a poison effect by any chance? It is not a poison effect, believe it or not. All right, uh, 22. Ah, that passes, so nothing happens. Ah, that would have been so good if that hit. That was the uh, spell I used last time. That was aphasia, which would have made it so she couldn't cast things with verbal components. Or commanded her weird little demon guys. Uh, but that will be his turn then. All right. Um... Brixby. All right. Uh, Brixby is going to... First, he's going to roll a spellcraft at the spell that she's casting. Try to identify that. That's a 12 off the die for a 28. Uh, looks like she's summoning a monster. <clears throat> All right. The energy <clears throat> drink? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> um, okay, let me see the distance on this bad daddy. So that's 190 feet. How far away are you, kids? Who did the measuring? Who can tell me how far away they are? Not 190 feet. I'll tell you that much. Uh, you it said it was only 10, uh, 15 feet up? Uh, 10 feet up. Was it 15 or was it 10? Oh, yeah, 10? I was going to say it was 15. I didn't move one square closer. Uh, <laughs> six, about 60.83 feet away. Okay. Give or take. Excellent. That's what I figured. Yeah, 60 so feet was Brix what I guessed today. Brixby's going to stay where he is, and he is going to uh, reach into his spell component pouch and pull out some kind of red sort of flappy kind of wilty bits of cabbage and with a word and a movement and the cabbage leaf consumed he's going to drop a stinking cloud on everyone up there and before you ask me there is no spell resistance on this so I'm going to need some fortitude saves across the board for all of your um and Taylor's locked up. Uh, is this a poison effect? Oh, man. I should have known that because you asked it, but that would have been meta. I'm like 90% sure it's poison because like you can get out of it by... Do, 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 do. Someone's probably screaming right now as I'm reading this. <laughs> so I feel like delay poison gets you out of this normally. I, I feel like it is. Should I ask ChatGPT? <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought you said Chad with a D GPT for a second, and I love that idea <laughs> of like a total Chad, Chad GPT. GPT. Like, yeah, bro, it's whatever. Yeah, bro. Dude. Yeah, bro. It totally fuck. It totally freaking works, bro. Uh, it's a I'm diesel, so bro. Sorry. It's a diesel, bro. Um, is this a poison effect? This is a poison effect. All right. So then that save is a twenty-two for the oh. um, human and the. Two demons are immune. Oh man, that's a it's a real stink on my part. So uh, yeah, everybody's cool. They're just chilling in the um, stink. Is the but boar in the class? As long as she's in the stink. Um, I mean, I feel like I probably I don't think so. It's like a twenty. Well, I don't know. I don't really understand how this lays over one another because like this four D chess we're playing. <laughs> if you want, we can put the boar in the cloud. If you're that cruel, I just want to know if the uh, boar is barfing. <laughs> Yeah. Do you do you want to pull up a let's pull up a boar's uh, fortitude save a fortitude save? Have title. So that if square <laughs> and that square are one on top of the other. That's how. Oh yeah, that that boar's vomiting. <laughs> Unless they can roll. Uh, well. It has a plus six fortitude save. Um, Jero, you want to roll for your baby boar? Yeah. <laughs> roll to see whether Alwyn starts attacking Birksby. Uh, 13 on the die, you said plus 6, so that's Yo, 19. you beat it. You beat it. <laughs> <laughs> the boar is cool. Everybody loves this thing. How long has it been? Is the boar actually still there? <laughs> <laughs> the boar is there for long enough, as long as this fight doesn't go on forever. It's... Um, so, how big is the stinking cloud? 20 foot diameter? It's, it's Yeah, it's 20 foot right, diameter. It's, I drew it on the wrong layer. All right, so like really, it's effectively like it's not actually this big. Let me. It's up there, and then it's like over here. It's it's big. It's this big. I'm just gonna draw yeah. so many. And circles. it's nine rounds and non-dismissible. <laughs> That's fun. Hey, I tried. That's uh, the end of my turn. Question, are they obscured from us now because they're in the cloud? Let's double check. Creates a bank of fog at like that created a fog cloud. So I'm pretty sure they have concealment and we yeah. have concealment. Everybody's got concealment. This episode's about to get a lot <laughs> more annoying. <laughs> I'm sick of that. Let's wait that. out here for a minute. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. Let's just all chill for a moment. For like a minute and a half. <laughs> the, the classic eight-round armistice. <laughs> all right. Um, Asher, you're up. There's a giant stinking cloud taking up. Oh, about a, a good third of the barn. Yeah, that's neat. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so... Do, 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 do. It's alright. Asher has a plan. He is going to... Do something you're gonna love it he's going to as a uh, well this is gonna be great to edit to get up to this hayloft presumably there's some sort of ladder or some such shenanigans yeah you would have seen um, before it became a stink town that those two lighted areas those are both ladders so they're okay. on the back wall all right not that Asher is really keen on ladders in the first place. He just jumps. But, uh, yeah, I was just mostly thinking it's not like we can just, you know, kick the ladder out and be like, heh, you can't come down. <laughs> that have been a pretty cool turn, though. Uh, yeah. All right. Asher is going to, uh, have a really long and exciting turn. Uh, I think for for funsies, he's going to swift action 
spend a grip point to activate Daring Vault. And he's going to say, I've been wanting to try this for a while. And he's going to move back, like turn the opposite direction, run 45 feet away, and then as a move action, expend two charges of his rift boots to appear a hundred feet away, which Pythagorically, uh, 80 feet, so a hundred feet away, 10 feet up is a hundred feet. Uh, so he can just appear in the hayloft and say, hello, boof. <laughs> wow. He boofed on up. And I'll make a fortitude save. Uh, yeah, 34. Oh my god. <laughs> Unfortunately, my best roll of the day by far on a Fortitude Sith. I mean, it's not that unfortunate, because if you got up there and immediately got nauseated, that would, that would not be good. Uh, you want to pop him up there somewhere? You can't move him that far, right? Or I don't have to... I don't see... Is that not... It's in like a cutout up there. Were you not able... Mm -hmm. I just dragged you up. Oh, I should stop moving my token then. (laughs) Keep keep (laughs) snapping over here. Like... I boofed too hard. Where did you go? (laughs) You boofed and broke roll 20. (laughs) Oh, it's up there. That helps. Hello. Well, that's quite surprising. As I requested, we could just talk face to face. But uh, that was his, his turn. Okay, so the first thing that happens on her turn is she finishes casting the spell, which is, of course, a one-round action. We're gonna... And she can't see anyone but um, Asher now, so she knows... But she knew where you were when she started casting the spell. So she summoned a demon that pops up right down there in, in the center of where the line used to be, which happens to be where Brixby is now. And uh, that thing's going to take its turn first. Now, this is a, a goat-headed humanoid that's probably over seven feet tall. And uh, it's looming over Brixby with, you know, humanoid muscles, mangy gray hide, and it, it just looks rough. Um, and it's gonna... It's just gonna do a real quick full attack on... Brixby. I guess it's it can't do a full attack because it's got reach, so it's only doing a gore on Brixby. Oh. Only a gore, and that is only a fourteen to hit. Oh, that is it's so far away. That it doesn't even hit my touch AC. I don't like it. Well. See, is there anything else I can do? No. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I just saw something in their character sheet that is really, really wild. But um yeah, it's just gonna chill from there. Um and I think that our dear friend, um the spellcaster up here, let's see, what's she gonna do? What's she gonna do? I mean, she's got a gunslinger in her face. She's in a poison. She's in a stinking cloud. Um, I think. Let's see. This thing, stinking cloud's only twenty feet wide, so she's gonna run over to the corner of the hayloft up here, and then she's gonna cast a spell. I, so many. Does it require line of sight? Um, hold on. I gotta look up the spell because she's got a lot of spells that I don't know that well. 
Yeah, I was just looking up Fog Cloud myself to see if you can cast it. Cannot cast anything that requires a line of sight. Unless you're within five feet. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't say anything about line of sight. Nor a line of effect. You just cast it on a 10 by 10 space. I don't know how that works for spells. Yeah. Which feels like I should know that. I feel like to have <laughs> to target a 10 by 10 space, though, don't you have to be able to see it? I guess, but she... I guess she would have cast this before she moved, because she she knows spellcasters better than I do. And she would drop a ten by ten pit. I'm gonna draw another circle. <laughs> Oops! All geometry on the top of the hayloft, basically in front of herself, encompassing the spot where Asher just appeared. So I'm gonna need a reflex save from Asher. Oh man, you can't have a good one of those. Is she casting Great Pit? Oh no, 33? Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> so Asher manages to jump out of the way and not fall into the. How deep is this pit? This pit is so deep. It's a 50 foot deep pit with acid at the bottom. Oh, acid pit. I love that spell. Also, uh, don't forget when your goblin uh, <laughs> demon turn happens that he is within five feet of that pit and therefore uh, also needs to make a save. All right. Speaking of that goblin demon thingy, it's going to jump back into initiative now that um, Asher is up in its face and it's going to take its turn and it's familiar with Asher. And it's going to uh, five foot step to the north. It doesn't care about no stinking cloud, but I guess it's going to be north. Ah, it, it needs... It, well, it doesn't see, so it doesn't even care about the cloud either. Um, so Dang. it just steps away from the pit, and it's going to give an evil eye on Asher. That will be a will save, please. It's a natural 20 for a 32. All right, so only one round of minus two to your saves. And then it okay. cackles. And then the other demon uh, is going to just take a little five-foot step into Asher's face. And it's not good at hitting Asher, but it's going to try anyways. This is not the right that block here it is and it's going to claw claw bite first bite is a natural one first claw is an 11 second claw is an 18 oh closer no <laughs> all right that brings us back around to alowin's uh, turn I'm sorry, but it does not bring us back to Alowin because something just ended its turn within five feet of a pit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Reflex save for the demon. Get in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 22. Which is apparently oh, the number around. that I always roll on saves in this combat, at least. Yeah. All right, now it's Alowin's turn. Run the pit. Uh, Alowin is in one E. Is it in a standard action to command an animal? Um, I don't know. If it is, he's not going to waste his turn doing that. But if it's <laughs> not, he's going to tell his, the boar to attack that uh, goat. <laughs> it's probably um, a standard action, yeah. yeah then uh, he will not do that uh, because he can do more damage to it fighting it himself. Uh, so it is... It, oh, I haven't used this. Yet. It depends. Uh, it does. Handling an animal is a move action. Pushing an animal is a full round action. Ah. Which he'd probably have to push to do almost anything. Oh. Just because like the real economy would come from it being a familiar or a companion that you could play. Yeah. You'd have to spend, I mean, this, 
Because Sam never specified that this action. Yeah, I, mean, I think I it just says in the wording of the thing like, that it's just like friendly to you. It's not treated like it's a trained companion. No, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. It does say that it knows all the standard tricks. I know that. Mm. Oh, then maybe it wouldn't be a push. But, maybe it would just be a. I mean, yeah. bad boy also can't yeah. see if that helps. Yeah. I mean, you could say run in a straight line towards me, I guess. Yeah, it can handle any command uh, described in the handle animal skill. I mean, it would take its entire movement to get there anyway. To climb along. Oh, stretch. yeah, there's the goat demon. Yeah, that's who I was thinking I was going to have it attack. Uh, but Can it charge it? Yeah, does the boar have charge? I think boar probably has charge. It's a boar. Uh, it has... Have- I mean, it doesn't one. have a mechanical, like, special charge, just a gore attack, but oh. I don't know why it couldn't charge with it. Yeah. Uh, if you say that that can be a move action, he would command the port to charge in a straight line at, say, thing which I think believe the boy would do on and as part of his turn yeah. Uh, so yeah he's gonna as a move action command the boar to charge the goat demon uh, he'll <laughs> just say run in a straight line and hit whatever's at the end of it since it can't see <laughs> uh, oops I'm still on that uh, and that is a four Sam helpfully gave me four stats here with a plus two yeah plus uh, two that the charge. is yeah uh, so that is an 11, so that is 15, 16. That is a 17 against regular AC, uh, against this goat demon thing. A 17 will not hit. Okay. <laughs> Unless Brixby uh, has a rapier out, then it's flanked. Uh, I, I didn't say that. Yeah. I he has a tail blade on, on right? Be honest. Yeah, I do. But I would do it be flanked blade. from the... Wouldn't it have to be oh, in that yeah, square to flank a, it? Yeah, never yeah. mind. Ignore yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh, okay, in that case, uh, he is then going to, for his regular action, I'm going to use this, I'm going to do, so I have a day, I have, oh wow, I have so many, uh, you know, uh, it's probably going to have to roll SR, because it's a demon, right, if something has spell resistance. Do I have to roll SR if I target the goat with a spell? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that is a 26, which I'm assuming makes it. Yeah. Uh, then that thing needs to make me a will save. All right. Super willful demon. Uh, that's a 15. Uh, DC 20. Uh, that demon seem it feels almost as though suddenly it has been teleported into the middle of a maze. It hasn't actually, oh but it thinks it has as I cast Mind Maze on it. <laughs> mind Maze? That's a new one for me. Yes. The spell causes the target to act as though it's wandering through a maze. While under the effects of this spell, the target can't make attacks or cast spells and must take at least one move action each round to walk in a random direction. Determined by using the guidelines for a misplash weapon, the target must move at its maximum speed during this required movement, though additional move actions after the first can be cover shorter distances. If it takes it into a dangerous area, it gets a second save. Uh, and that's it, and it lasts uh, seven rounds. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it like a save every round, or are they just... It only gets another save if it takes itself into danger. So, like, if, like, uh, it wanders into the acid pit, it gets a save. That's a wild <laughs> one. Man. I've never heard of that spell. And I'm assuming through a threatened square or off a ledge, so I'm guessing, like, if it wanders past Brixby and he gets an AOO, it gets a save. So, like, if I were to attack it, it'd probably leave the maze, right? That's what I'm looking at. It doesn't say it gets a save when it gets attacked just if it's in a threatened area. But I'm assuming the attack counts as a threat, so I'm assuming you get the save if you attack it. That's fair. It doesn't say it, but otherwise it feels like it's way too powerful for a third level spell. Alright. That's a fun one. Rixby's up. Alright, Rixby's gonna roll... Uh... 
really some fan service here because this is what the people want is more knowledge checks. Brixby's going to first roll a spellcraft to see if uh, he understands what Alwyn cast. So that is a nine off the die for a 25. Um, it's a level three spell, yeah, so I don't know what the DC I'm for that is. I'm pretty sure I know. Let me just double check here. Yeah. Doop a doop boop. I think it's, isn't it like 15 plus the level or something to identify a spell? I think that's the case. Or 10 plus the level, something like that. I'm pretty sure it'd be lower than 25. Fifteen plus the spell level. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you only need to hit a seventeen, yeah. or no, an eighteen. So you got it. All right. Cool. So I'm aware of bad boy is in a maze, and now I'm gonna roll a knowledge planes to figure out what bad boy is. Uh, not a hot roll. That's a ten off the die for a twenty-one. Um, twenty-one is enough to identify a sure demon. Sure. Um, a sure demon resembles a tall, muscular human- humanoid with the head of and hooves of a goat. Ragged hide co- covers patches of the Shur's body, usually around the forearms and lower legs, with a crest-like patch running down the creature's crown to the nape of its neck. Shur demons are seven feet tall, though they usually stoop and so appear shorter, and weigh about 300 pounds. Also known as spite demons, Shur's are among the most vile and violent tempered of all the inhabitants of the Abyss. Um, you can ask a question of the the noble sure. Is there anything anyone wants to know? Because I'm like I'm pretty torn between lowest save and like special defenses. I feel like the special defenses probably aren't much different than the other demons, so that's probably a bad assumption to make. Uh, I mean. I'm I'm cool with whatevs. I mean, it's all it's all it's all gravy to me. I mean, special attacks is fun to know, but I, as I always like to say, I'm probably going to find out soon. So, <laughs> and we can also just leave it to wander in a maze for the next seven rounds and focus on the other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm aware it's in a maze. I just wanted to know some stuff about it. So you know what? How yeah. about um, about spells and spell like abilities? Um. Well, it doesn't have spells, but for spell-like abilities, it has constant seeing visibility and tongues. That's right. Three times a day, it can cast Arcane Lock, Expeditious Retreat, and Protection from Good. Once a day, it can summon um, with a 20% chance of summoning 1d3 more shures. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, that is that's actually great great knowledge to know um the whole freaking see invisibility thing um that said brixby is still going to with that knowledge uh looking at this monster that's kind of staring off into the distance and maybe kind of walking around like they're wearing an oculus rift is going to pull out an eyelash encased in gum hair that could disappear Put the ninja icon on my token here. And I'm gonna move. For the people at home that aren't Sam, that's uh, 20 feet to the north. And that's my turn. All right, and that'll take us to Asher, standing in a stinking cloud with a demon in your face and a pit behind you. Yeah. Uh, is it start your turn uh, in the cloud? You make a save. Oh, it's on my turn. So everybody needs to. I guess that's just Asher. That's unfortunate. So Asher needs to make a save on my turn. Uh, good ask. Okay. Uh, do I still? Ha- I have a minus two to my saves, don't I? You do. This is the worst. Because that, that brings it down to a 17 instead of a 19. <laughs> you can't oh. fail. You straight up can't fail. Well, I thought you it rolled. was 18. I thought I was like, oh, man. Yeah, 18's the DC. So. Yeah, and that's why I have a 17. Oh, total. okay. My bad. Okay. <laughs> My bad. So the demons just made you barf? Yeah, uh, because of the minus two. Otherwise, I would have had a total of a 19. Oh, uh, no. 
with a three off the dice because I have a plus sixteen, so I just needed a two or better. I oh wait, you were a plus seventeen. Oh, oh I'm so sad. Um, oh wait, the uh, the evil eye. Asher boofs up here. The boof bar reflexively <laughs> tumbles away no. from a pit, and then just starts to feel pretty awful and. So he's now only able to take move actions. Is that right? He's nauseated, yeah. so he can make one move action around. Or is it uh, two? Oh, and I have to roll a d4. Is that right? No, no. That's when you leave the cloud. Okay. Uh, well, he's about to. So yes. On second thought, <clears throat> I'd like to try these boots again, and then we'll boof from off the ledge and as a move action and appear uh, you know, roughly 50, 55 feet south of uh, Oculus Rift, surely. But only the, the swathe next to him could even see him to know that he disappeared, so maybe Sheila Hydemark thinks he's still up there. It's hard okay. to say possible. Now you roll a d4. It's going to be great. Watch me roll the hottest four you've ever seen. <laughs> Only a one, so is that two then? Two rounds, yep. Awesome. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's the evil eye. It's canonically the swathe. Yeah, that's a really effective turn for old <laughs> Mad Ups. And yeah, I'm counting that's uh, four charges off the boot so far today. Very nice. Uh, I did no damage. I've used two turns to do nothing. Except for appear and then disappear. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, well, I think our dear friend Diara, a.k.a. Sheila Hyde-March, is gonna, since she's feels kind of safe just standing in this corner with a stinking cloud in front of her. She's just going to start casting a spell. Um, that takes us to Fisher's turn, so I believe I have to roll a d8 to see what direction it's going. Yeah, and it's the is... same rules for if you mess up throwing like a potion, All right, and this which is, is a d8 and then it's those squares of <laughs> Clockwise, starting at 12 is the up. One, two, three. It is going as far as it can to the right. Yeah, and if it runs into a wall, it stops its movement for that turn, but it does not end the spell. Yeah, it walks, and this door happens to be open on the map, just like physically <laughs> propped open. So it walks into uh, a horse I wish table. she could see it. And just, it would be so great if she summons that and just watch it look around and then walk into a room. <laughs> this goat demon just wanders into a wall on the side of the barn and then just stops. And that is one turn of its maze. Checked off. So let's see. Sure number green. Or not sure. Swathe number green. Uh, saw Asher mysteriously disappear. It also almost fell in the pit before. So I think what it's going to do is it's going to climb down the ladder here. So that's quarter movement. That's basically all of its movement to get down to the bottom of the ladder. And then um, Blue is blue's going to do the same thing spend all of its movement to come down to the bottom of the ladder but of course why am i telling you this you can't see it unknow the last several seconds all right so i think despite the fact that you all seem completely incapable of harming one another i'm going to bed good night smoke cloud good night swathes and shurs and sorcerers oh my Good night, impervious demons. Good night, Sam.
Against the Machine is property of Network Against the Machine, LLC, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are property of Paizo Publishing. See their website for more details. Theme Against the Machine was written and performed by your own Zach. See the show notes for additional music and sound licensing. If you enjoyed the show, we encourage you to leave us a review. I will say, Dolga did not wake Asher up. Asher was already awake. That's why all I had to do was put on his hat. Otherwise, he either sleeps fully dressed or was comfortable just opening the door to whoever was on the other side and whatever he was wearing to bed uh, and just a hat on. So <laughs> I'd like to think he was, uh, you know, excited that there were no broken guns to fix for once and was just, you know, I don't know, cleaning his boots and Dolga knocking on the door. Very important. Keep it all in. I'm going to force someone to edit this out by saying this first, but I'm just imagining Asher wearing a cowboy hat and then another biblically placed cowboy <laughs> hat to the door to open it. What? Like he's a member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> oh, my God. Give oh, no. <laughs> oh, come on, Jero. That's all under the bridge. Okay. Boop. <laughs> it automatically re-added me, even though I desubbed. So I'm in there again don't know why it's like that u2 album that no one could remove from their phones or ipods (laughs) oh god i remember that everything just (laughs) downloaded it that one day was it a beautiful day Uh, depends how you feel about bono you put me this close to the edge i'll tell you what you too Man, we have just committed murder on some dad out there. They are just <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Gone. We're a very dad forward podcast. <laughs> <laughs>